Hey, Dr. Wilson here. I'm in the lab today, but I thought I would make a second video this week because the presidential debates just happened and a lot of stuff was said about COVID. And given how important this pandemic is and how many wrong things were said during this debate, I thought it was important for me to comment on it. So let's get into it. If we would have listened to you, the country would have been left wide open. Millions of people would have died, not 200,000, and one person is too much. It's China's fault. It should have never happened. They stopped it from going in, but it was China's fault. So our president doesn't really like to take blame for the COVID situation happening in America. He likes to blame China instead. And he's right that China acted irresponsibly at the beginning of this pandemic. However, there is a lot that he could have done and did not do in order to stop the pandemic. I mean, look, even back in 2005, the Bush administration was really worried about the idea of a pandemic influenza threatening the world. So they made a pandemic playbook. This playbook outlined guidelines that told us exactly what we needed to do in order to prevent a pandemic or control one once it happens. It mentions a lot of the things that the U.S. now seems to be fighting over as things to do if a pandemic were to happen. It mentions personal protective equipment, including face masks. It includes social distancing, closing of schools. It includes mass testing. All of these things and more were pegged as extremely important by scientists worldwide as things that we need to do in order to control a pandemic. This playbook was handed down to the Obama administration and they added lessons learned from the Ebola outbreak and the swine flu pandemic of 2009. This playbook was also passed down to Donald Trump's administration, but he doesn't seem to have had any enthusiasm for doing the things that were outlined as really important. You didn't think we should have closed our country because you thought it was too, it was terrible. You wouldn't have closed it for another two months. By my doing it early, in fact, Dr. Fauci said, President Trump saved thousands of lives. So it's true that Fauci did say this, and it's also true that Trump's travel restrictions on China and the rest of the world likely did contribute to saving lives. However, what he did do was really too little too late. You see, each time a country was confirmed to have COVID cases, the administration would not put the travel ban on right away. By the time these policies were in place, the coronavirus was already in the U.S. We needed to move on right away to mass testing and getting that out as fast as possible, screening people that come in through airports, etc. But none of that really happened. And it wasn't even a travel ban, it was more of a travel restriction. In fact, even after these travel restrictions were placed, an estimated 40,000 passengers arrived in the U.S. from China. This travel restriction did not stop the coronavirus from entering and spreading throughout the U.S. We desperately needed to do more during that critical window before the coronavirus got out of control. We needed to listen to science, we needed to communicate, and we needed to cooperate with each other and the rest of the world. But it just didn't happen. <laughs> the governors said I did a phenomenal job. Most of them said that. In <laughs> fact, people that would not be necessarily on my side said that. This is true. The governor of New York, Cuomo, is on film saying this. However, due to everything I just said, I have to disagree with him. Dr. Slawi, the head of your operation Warp Speed, has said exactly the same thing. Are they both wrong? Well, I've spoken to the companies and we can have it a lot sooner. It's a very political thing because people like this would rather make it political than save lives. Right. It is a very political thing. I've spoken to Pfizer, I've spoken to all of the people that you have to speak to. We have great Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, and others. They can go faster than that by a lot. This is sort of half true, but Trump and the moderator don't seem to be on the same page at this part of the debate, so it comes off as just really confusing. The truth is that those pharmaceutical companies have said that they might have finished testing a vaccine by the end of the year, maybe before November 3rd. However, rolling them out and actually manufacturing and distributing those vaccines across the United States, that's going to take a lot longer. That's been pretty clear from the pharmaceutical companies, from top scientists, from practically everybody. So at this part, he's sort of being accurate with what I think he's trying to say, but in the context of the question being asked, he's wrong. The vaccine is going to take a while to distribute. It's a possibility that we'll have 
the answer before November 1st. It could I'm, also I'm be after that. It's generally available. It, not well, we're going to deliver it right away. We have the military all set up logistically. They're all set up. We have our military that delivers soldiers, and they can do 200,000 a day. Even if the military were to distribute 200,000 vaccines a day, it would still take about five years to vaccinate everybody in America. And in order to reach herd immunity, which requires about 70 to 80 percent vaccination, it would still take about three and a half years to get everybody. And those calculations are just for getting one dose of this vaccine to everybody. It's likely we might need two doses, which means it'll take even longer. There is just no way that we're going to have a vaccine and have it distributed widely before the end of the year. It just can't happen. Every serious company is talking about maybe having a vaccine done by the end of the year, but the distribution of that vaccine will not occur until sometime beginning or the middle of next year to get it out if we get the vaccine. So this is just a little bit inaccurate. If we do get a vaccine approved before the end of the year, pharmaceutical companies do have plans to produce a couple tens of millions of doses. But again, that's not a lot in the grand scheme of things, and you still need to distribute them. That distribution will start, but it probably won't reach many people by the end of the year. We want to, he wants to shut down the country. We just went through it. We had to, because we didn't know anything about the disease. Now we found that elderly people with heart problems and uh, diabetes and different problems are very, very vulnerable. We learned a lot. Young children aren't. So it's true that young children typically don't die from this disease, but it's important to include the information that children can still catch this disease and spread it. It's also unclear whether or not children suffer from the long-term effects that we've seen in so many COVID survivors. Also, young people, young adults are still vulnerable to this disease, especially young adult minorities. But this has nothing to do with anything genetic. Let me be clear about that. It has everything to do with the fact that minorities have poorer access to quality health care. More minorities are essential workers, so we are more at risk of getting COVID. And it pertains to things having to do with environmental justice. Those are the reasons. And you can't ignore those in this pandemic. You just can't. Well, masks, masks make a big difference. His own head of the CDC said if we just wore masks between now, if there, everybody wore masks in social distance between now and January, we'd probably save up to 100,000 lives. It matters. And they've also it said matters. the opposite. They've and also said no, the opposite. no serious person said the opposite. They no so, so, well, look, serious I, 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 person. Dr. You, Fauci. Dr. Fauci said the he opposite. He did not I, I say the opposite. We he got said a little very bit strongly, more than a minute left in this masks segment. Masks are not good. Then he changed his mind. He said masks are good. I, I'm, I'm okay ask, with masks. I'm I want to ask you both masks. about one last. Despite not having a vaccine for this virus, we still have a really effective toolkit in order to fight it. And masks are a really important tool in that box. Don't get me wrong, we have to use the entire box if we want to get this virus under control at this point. But masks absolutely work. That has always been the position of scientists, and nobody changed their mind about it. We just changed our recommendations. In the beginning, when this pandemic was not out of control, masks didn't seem like a necessary thing to recommend to the public, and they might have had drawbacks. Masks are not a substitute for social distancing. So we didn't want people to wear a mask and then just go hang out with people as if life was normal. Also, we wanted to conserve masks for healthcare workers because we didn't know how many we would need. But then when the virus got out of control and we learned that people can spread it while still not having symptoms, masks became really important. And that's why we recommended them. In hindsight, it definitely would have been better if masks were recommended right from the beginning with clear messaging and a lot of support from the federal government. But that didn't happen, and science never changed its mind about whether or not masks work. That is just false. In any case, why you holding the big rallies? Why you not? You go first, sir. Because people want to hear what I have to say. I mean, but are you not worried about a spreading disease? President, and I'll have 25, 35,000 people show up at airports. We use airports. Are you not worried about the disease We have a lot of issues, people. Sir. Well, so far, we have had no problem whatsoever. It's outside. That's a big difference, according to the experts. I'll ignore the fact that the way he said experts is really concerning and just say that he has had a lot of indoor rallies ever since he knew that this virus could spread through the air. 
And I think that some people would disagree that you haven't had any problems in doing so. Okay, so honestly, we don't know for sure whether or not Herman Cain caught the COVID that killed him at Trump's rally in Oklahoma. However, that rally was associated with a sharp increase in COVID cases in Oklahoma just a couple weeks after he had it. So the data does suggest that it might have been a problem to have those indoor rallies. Well, that's all that I'm going to cover from this presidential debate. I know I talked mostly about what Trump said, but he said pretty much all the misinformation that came out of this COVID segment. So that's what I covered. As a scientist, it's just been really sad and really concerning to watch the course of this pandemic play out. It's so hard to know exactly what is going to happen if we don't take action and then watching as we don't take action and all of those horrible things just happening. That's part of the reason why I have this YouTube channel, why I make these videos. We need scientists who can communicate science effectively to the public. And I might not be the most accomplished or best scientist in the world, but I'm doing my best the best way that I can. If you want to learn more about the real science surrounding COVID and masks and lockdowns, I put a ton of links in the description for you to go read yourself, including all the links to research that supports what I say in this video. So seriously, don't take my word for it. Go check out the information for yourself. I'll be putting out another COVID misinformation debunking video next week. So if you want to see that, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Until then, go vote and don't just go vote, get involved do things that support what you believe in. And I'll see you next time.